Hey guys, thanks for uh, stopping by the shop. This is Chuck, and uh, we're going to have just a quick discussion about Morse Taper 2. And the reason we're talking about Morse Taper 2, which is right here, is my uh, Monarch 10 E. the tailstock is a Morse Taper 2. So we're not going to get into, you know, dimensions or anything like that, but typically your Morse Taper has a tang at the end, and this tang does two things. One, a lot of the holders pinch on the tang to help prevent it from turning uh, and take some of the pressure off of the actual Morse taper that's doing the actual bite, which is typical. And then secondly, it's the ejector. That, the, that gets pressed when you go to push it out of the tailstock. And, and this is a Morse taper drill. And there's uh, typically what happens when you put it in a drill press or in, in even in my tailstock, it has the slot like this. And the ejector tang presses on the back of that. On a regular drill press, when the spindle's like that, of course, you use a wedge to push the Morse taper back out. This happens to be a Morse taper 2 to a Morse taper 2. So with all that said... This is um, my couple of my live centers for my Morse Taper 2 on the 10 E. And you can see that one, they don't have a tang. And this one, I think I did this. I don't know that I turned the back of this one down. But the other day using them, you can see how big this diameter is on this unit here. This one has removable tips. It's a, uh, it's a do-all. It's a nice unit. And I've got all the tips for it. But this guy's so big, and I'm not using a rocker post type of tool post. I'm using a, an Alorus tool post that all of this gets in the way. This one's a little bit smaller in diameter. And this one's uh, a Japanese one. And I had the same, I had a problem. Without the ejector tang, this unit wouldn't eject. So the simple fix on it was basically drill and tap it and then have a lock nut and then machine this uh, Allen bolt, Allen head bolt, so that it fits into the receiver in the tailstock. And then the ejector pin presses it out when you want it out. So that works. It's kind of ugly, but it works. <laughs> this one, I think, I think I might have, I don't know if I did this turning or not, but the way this one's set up right now, it ejects. And part of it is the taper and how far the t it'll go into the actual receiver, whether it's, the, whether it's the drill press or whatever, how far it goes back in. So... I was thinking about it and I was going like, geez, I really wish I had, I call them a CNC point, where the uh, 60 degree is smaller. And it gives you much more room to get a tool in there also. And I was going like, boy, I wish I had those. Why don't I have those? And I went, oh, wait a minute, I do have them. So here's one of them. It's got the, the small point on it. No ejector tag, tang on it, right? So this unit will go into my tailstock in the Morse Taper 2 locks, but then the only way that I can get it out is, is when I close it, uh, when I, when I uh, retract the quill in the tailstock, I need to put a wedge there to pop it out. Well, the way I have my dial, my, um, <sighs> my caliper, I have a caliper set up so that I can read the depth of the, uh, tailstock when it when it engages when I when I the quill excuse me when I move the quill doo -doo 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 -doo. okay so it's a problem doing that so I go yeah I think I got a couple of these I ended up getting them from Banggood uh, they sent them over and I did a, I think I did a video on these way back when well so I basically interesting from Banggood I ended up I made a tang for uh, this guy right here. So basically, 
interesting enough, these are cousins, same same units, uh, but basically these diameters are different at the end, and they both had this step in it, just like this one has that step in it right there. Well, you'd think they'd both be the same diameter and everything. Well, they're not. So anyway, I machined machined this one, and then I machined the second one. And what I ended up doing was I took a piece of brass that I had. I had a rod of brass, basically a piece of brass like that, and bored it to fit over this uh, step here and made a press fit. So I pressed this piece on to the end of the Morse taper two, and then on the mill, created my tang. Oop. On the mill, I basically made the tang. So it was a fun project. It works great. Um, I'm happy I did it. I'm not going to do the second one. It's not, I don't need two of them and I don't need to go. It's, it's, it's a little bit of work figuring out the whole thing and making it fit. But I had fun doing it and it uh, turned out well. Um, so I thought I would uh, share that with you. Um, guys, if you have this situation like this, it's very simple to set it up, hold it in the chuck, drill and tap the end, do the bolt, and work it out. Very simple way to, to, to make, it, uh, make it fit. Okay, well, I hope you enjoy this uh, quick little uh, discussion in, uh, about Morse Taper 2 and how you can solve it. Um, it worked for me and uh, had fun, uh, of course, uh, doing the build. Okay, guys, thanks for stopping by the shop. I appreciate it. As always, uh, you know, subscribe, hit the bell, give you the whole uh, mantra there, but you don't need it. And uh, hey, court's adjourned. See you guys. Thank you.